What's up, navigation traders? Welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, September 20th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. We're gonna go through the, the alerts, but before we do, I wanna jump in the community, talk about a couple things. One is the upcoming event. So if you click on events, and you'll be receiving an email about this as well, but we are doing a three-part strategy class on what we're calling the Iron Duck Option Spread. Uh, if you just click on that events and then click here to save your spot, I'll take you to the registration page. Or if you just go to navigationtrading.com slash Iron Duck Registration, the dates are October 1st, October 8th, and October 15th. Okay, so those are Tuesdays. Tuesday, October 1st, Tuesday the 8th, Tuesday the 15th, four o'clock. Each of those days, if you can make it, in any way, you, you need to be there. This is, I, I mean, I haven't been this excited about a, a, a strategy in a long, long, long time. This is, this is something that's quickly becoming my favorite go-to strategy. Um, and just to give you an idea, uh, the, the, I've, been, I've been trading this with the criteria that we have set up. I've been kind of working through the criteria, working through the, the nuances of this trade for a while. And I've been trading it really heavily in, in the account that I've been using um, literally in the last six months is up 50%. And so, and, and actually that's not, that's not completely fair because I've been doing a couple of other things in that account as well. So I can't give all the credit to the Iron Duck strategy, but it's a big majority of that return has come from the strategy. So Make sure you're there. Uh, this will be recorded. It will be for pro members. I'll, obviously, if you're listening to this, you are a pro member. So it'll be put into your uh, membership area, uh, recorded, and then we'll cut it up into sections to make it a little bit more digestible. Uh, but it's, it's, it's awesome. So make sure you can attend if possible. And obviously, I want your feedback as well. Uh, if there's anything that I need to do to record additional sessions to clarify some of the pieces. It's a pretty cut and dry strategy though. I mean, there's no rolls, no adjustments. It's get in, get out, a little bit shorter term time frames. So I think you're really, really gonna like it. So make sure you put these calendars on your date, on your uh, put these dates on your calendar. You don't wanna miss it. Uh, and, and we'll be uh, talking more about it. There'll be emails going out. Uh, but if you want to get registered right away, go ahead and do that uh, by just clicking on the events in the community. So that is that. Uh, then the other thing is I want to just mention who got caught being hot this week. Uh, this week goes to a kind of a newer member who's who's jumped right in into the conversations, uh, not only asking great questions, but already, you know, helping other traders answering their questions. Love it. I love I love just the positivity of this community and where it's going. We're just getting started. We've got some uh Right now, we're in the process of revamping our entire membership area, which includes the community and our alerts delivery. So it's going to be awesome. So we're just getting started here. So appreciate all the commentary, all the uh, all the uh, feedback, and all the participation in the community. It is it, it's a lot of value for people more than you probably know, especially for newer traders. So keep up the good week, good good work. And this week goes to. S-A-R. Not sure exactly what that stands for, but that's what he goes by in the community. So say congrats to S-A and uh, keep up the good work, S-A. Uh, we love having you here. All right, so let's jump into the alerts for the week, starting with Monday the 16th. Our first was a rolling uh, adjusting trade where we have the short call vertical in uh, DE. Now remember, this is the one that started out as a long put, but they were getting close to earnings. And frankly, I kind of messed up when I did our last roll and I turned it into a short call vertical, but we kept it with the earnings on the horizon. And so now it is a short call vertical and we're keeping it as such. So we rolled that from September. We were down to four days to expiration, rolled that out to October with 32 and adjusted our strikes appropriately. So if we take a look at DE, uh, down a little bit today. Uh, so you can see we've made back a little bit since that roll. So just holding on to this for that short delta exposure. And by the way, right when I just started recording this video, uh, just before the S&Ps were up, you know, five, six, seven points. And now all of a sudden they're down 12. Sounds like uh, China is cut, cutting short the trade talks. And so the market's reacting uh, in that fashion. So interesting to see what'll happen over the weekend. 
so that's DE. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in QQQ. So a lot of rolls this week, and we're in expiration week. Today is the last day of trading for the September equity options. And so doing a lot of rolls here. This was in QQQ. This one was down to also four days to expiration. We went ahead and rolled this one all the way out to November. So we skipped over October, rolled this out to November with 60 days and adjusted those strikes. So let's go to QQQ. And the reason we did that is just, again, we talk about this a lot. We're just spreading out our rolls spreading out our time to time to expiration. It's a, just another form of diversification. And so this is the one that's out in November. Now we also have the one that we had already previously rolled into October. And you know, that's made back a lot since we've done that. So it's at uh, a good point here where if it continues, if price of QQQ continues lower, we will look to roll these strikes closer and we'll roll this from October out to November. Um, but that's where we're at on those two spreads. Next trade, opening trade in oil for slash CL. So we put on a strangle in oil, targeting 30 to 50% of max profit. And we got out of this today. So we're only in the trade for four days. Or actually, we put this on Monday, got out today, booked over 30% of max profit. And remember what happened to oil when um, there's that attack uh, from potentially Iran or somebody, we don't really know yet, <laughs> but they uh, attacked the Saudi oil um, um, uh, refineries. And, and so oil shot up and then they came out and said, no, it, we're good. We're going to be back to full capacity within a couple weeks. So then oil dropped and now it's just been kind of bouncing around here. But in the meantime, implied volatility contracted. So we got it when it was super high, contracted nicely, just like we always say, fear is overstated. There's always a big overreaction in the markets, and that's exactly what happened here, giving us the ability to book a quick 30% of max profit. I think we booked over 500 bucks on that trade. Next trade, opening adjusting trade on IYR. This is the real estate ETF. So we added a, an iron condor in IYR. At that point, we were still hoard, holding our short call vertical spread from a previous iron condor. Uh, so we just went ahead and added this one to kind of spread out those break evens, collect some more credit. We're up a little bit on this trade since we put that on, but just waiting for some more time to pass. And as you can see, that short call, short call vertical is now zeroed out because we closed that today. Today was the last day of trading. Instead of rolling it, you know, I don't, I don't really have a, a bias. You know, I, th I don't think real estate's going down necessarily. And so instead of rolling that and keeping that short delta specifically in the real estate sector, we went ahead and just closed that. And so we're now we're just holding that iron condor. Next trade, closing adjusting trade in SPY. So we closed, we had a short call vertical that was part of a previous iron condor. We went ahead and closed that out. Um, we just opted to exit. And, and you, you'll notice I did a lot less rolling on some of these uh, and just closed them out just because of where we're at with our overall short delta versus our theta. So we're right at about, we're a little over two to one on our short delta versus our theta, beta weighted to SPY. And so I like, I like where we're at. I don't want to really necessarily be any more short than that. So I didn't, so a lot of these, uh, especially the specifically the three that we closed today, which I'll get to, we just went ahead and closed instead of rolling uh, to go ahead and just get those off the books. And we're in a good position with our ratio. So didn't want to carry any additional short delta. So that's what we did in SPY. Now we've also got a full iron condor going on in SPY. And uh, you can see prices hanging out right here. So not quite enough to take off yet. Uh, but we'll look, we'll be looking at that next week if prices continue lower. Next trade was a rolling adjusting trade in DIA. So very similar to what we did in the queues. We just rolled this from September with three days to expiration out to November, skipped over October and uh, kept to keep that short Delta exposure in our portfolio. And, and, and going back to IYR, I mean, you know, I, I like having the short Delta in DIA and QQQ. It's more of a broad market index as opposed to a sector uh, index like real estate or, you know, something a little bit more specific. I'd rather have it in one of these broad markets. And so let's take a look at DIA. We've got kind of a similar situation to the queues. We've got the one that we just rolled into November where it's price is pretty close to where we put it on to where we rolled. And then we've also got the one in October 
uh, which has moved down nicely. And so, it, again, just like Q's, if it continues lower, we'll roll these strikes closer, roll that out to November, but uh, just in hold mode at this point. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in KRE. So we've got, uh, we had a short strangle in KRE. It's kind of nearing the the point of a potential adjustment, and but we haven't rolled the puts up on that one yet. But in this case, we just added a short strangle, collect more credit, widen out those break evens. Uh, we did this out in November, where our other one is in October, and so let's take a look at both of those in KRE. So here's the one in November that we just put on. It's pretty dead centered. Got a little bit of profit since we put it on, just waiting for some more theta to decay. And then on the October one, you can see price is still hanging out in the upper end of the range. Now remember, it, it has breached our short strike here, but if we look at just the put, you can see there's still a, a decent little chunk of premium left in there. So if it does continue much higher, and, and time has passed as well, and time will continue to pass, and so um, you know that, that pink line will get closer and closer to the green line. So once we get a little bit uh, more premium out of that, if it continues lower, we'll roll up those puts. If it goes back lower, then obviously we will be back in range and we'll be just waiting for some more time to pass. So that's the plan in KRE. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in XLK. So we just rolled this from September to October. Now there was no November options. And so that's why we opted for October with 29 days. And, you know, it just, it helps kind of, again, diversify that that time frame that we're in. So went ahead and rolled that, adjusted the strikes. If we look at XLK now, uh, you can see prices moved down since we did that roll. So we've gotten back some profit uh, since we did that, just holding this for some more downside, downside action to benefit. Next trade, rolling adjusting trade in ES. So this is the long put vertical that we had in the S&P futures. And we've been just holding this for that downside, uh, downside protection. It's moved down a little bit since we did this roll yesterday. So just holding that for some more downside to benefit that piece. Next trade, a closing trade in SPX. So we had a weekly double calendar. We were able to book a nice profit on that trade. I think it was 600 and some dollars. Uh, 580, yeah, I booked 580 on that one. So nice trade there. And then we ended up putting on another one today, which I'll get to here in just a second, but uh, um, got out of that. Those are uh, we were in that for eight days. Uh, booked a booked a really nice profit there. So out of that one, and then the next day, which is today, we entered a new one, which I'll get to here in just a second. Uh, keeping in route with our other trades, though, um, I mentioned this one. So we earlier on Monday we put on a CL short strangle, and then today Friday we closed it out. Booked over 30 uh, 30 percent of max profit in just that short period of time. Next trade, closing trade in EEM. So this is where we we put on just a long put, which where we don't buy a lot of options, but in this case we're just we're looking for a potentially a quick move down in EEM. That obviously did not happen. Actually, it was lower for a little bit, and then it just shot higher. So we ended up just taking a loss on this one. If we take a look at a chart of EEM, this is emerging markets, and you know so when kind of bounced up here. I was looking for a potential continuation to the downside and that did not happen. It just shot higher and then just been kind of consolidating. So we, uh, we took a loss on that one, but we're out. And then next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IYR. That's that short call vertical that I already mentioned. And then XLF. So this was our last September position. Today was the last trading day. So again, instead of rolling, we just opted to exit out of this. And, uh, and and took a took a loss on that trade, and then just uh, just to keep our short deltas where we want them, which is just over two to one on that short delta to theta ratio. And then lastly, we put on another weekly double calendar in SPX. This one uh, has seven days to expiration in the front week, twenty one in the back week, and then um, so let's take a look at this now. Again, I put this on this morning when the S&Ps were up about five or six, and now they're down 11. Uh, so this has already moved to the lower end of its range. You can see prices hanging out right here, uh, showing a little bit of profit, but it's made a substantial move. The other thing to notice is you can see where these price slices are. This is where the original break-even was when we put this trade on. And now look at the break-evens. They've, they've 
they've widened substantially. And that's what happens when the implied volatility expands uh, with these things. The market moved down, implied volatility expands, your break even and your max profit is going to get larger. You know, so unlike unlike an iron condor where those break evens and your max profit are static, because we're using different expiration cycles, we're selling the front week, we're buying the back week. Um, though those are going to fluctuate throughout the life of the trade, and that's what we're seeing here. So that is it for the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions, starting with gold. We've got two different pieces in gold, one of which is a short call vertical from our previous iron condor. Price is just outside the range. If we can get a little bit more uh, movement down back into range there next week. These expire uh, next week. So we've got five days. So we will address this early next week. We'll either roll or close that. Um, I, I, I like I like gold a little bit to the downside. So we may kind of keep that dream alive for another cycle. We'll see where we're at with everything and how that affects the rest of our portfolio. And then the other piece that we have in gold is this other iron condor where you can see prices hanging out right here, uh, waiting for some more profit before we do anything there. Natty gas. This has been a crazy ride, but we're right almost smack dab back in the middle of our two sets of short strangles, just waiting for some more time to pass before we do anything on those. And they have got 38 days to expiration, so got quite a bit of time there. ZB, bonds. So we've got two different pieces here. One is this adjusted strangle where you can see, let me spread this out for you. You can see prices hanging out right here. We could use a little bit more up movement uh, before we do anything. We'll be either rolling or closing this once we get to about 25 to 30% of max profit on here, assuming price uh, plays nice and, and, and moves a little bit higher. Then the other piece here is a, a strangle that we added to. And so there's no adjustments done on either side of this one at this point, but just playing the waiting game here, waiting for some more time to pass on that. All right, so now wheat, we are, this position is, is well over 50% of max profit. And you may, I, I'm surprised I didn't get any questions on this, but wondering, you know, why you haven't, haven't booked this. And really, we're just waiting until next week. The next cycle is at 63 days to, to expiration. We're going to add another piece in there. We're trying to get back to profitability in wheat. And so we want to, we want to continue this. So we are just kind of holding on to this, letting that letting that additional theta, we will uh, probably add an iron condor in December, in the December cycle early next week, and then close out the November one. So just holding on to that, it's dead centered. I uh, got, a, got a decent amount of range for it to move around in and not really hurt us as far as the slope of the PL line. So just wanted to hold this over the weekend, potentially collect some more theta on that one. Apple down over a percent and a quarter today. So move back down into range, just holding this for that short delta exposure. Um, you, you're looking for some more downside to benefit that. I mentioned DE, I mentioned DIA. EWZ, we've got a short strangle. Uh, price was close to being at a point of adjustment. It's come back down, uh, so just looking for a little bit more downside to benefit that short strangle. I didn't add to this because implied volatility has been so low. IV percentiles at 10, IV rank at 12, so I'm not going to add in a, in a situation like that. Goldman Sachs, uh, this was another one that kind of ripped higher on us where we had a, a short delta position. Uh, so you can see this one's out of range. We need some more downside to move back into range on that one. We're out in October, so we got plenty of time there, but uh, just looking for some more downside to benefit that. IYR I mentioned, KRE, QQQ, SMH. All right, our good friend SMH. We've been in this one for a little while. Uh, we've got this adjusted strangle. Price is hanging out here near the upper end of the range. With with this recent down move that we're seeing right now, we, we are getting a little bit of an implied volatility pop. So I would like to add to this early next week. We've got a lot of capital. We're only using about 30% of our capital right now. And so got some uh, got some dry powder to release and uh, so I'd like to add another kind of centered short strangle here in, in November in SMH, and we'll look at doing that early next week if implied volatility stays elevated. I mentioned SPX, SPY, and XLK. So that's it. So those are all the positions. Those are all the trades. Don't forget, make sure you register for the Iron Duck Option Spread three-part strategy class. First one is, in, uh, is October 1st at 4 p.m., uh, but make sure you register to save your spot. I think we are limited to, with our webinar software, li limited to 500. 
which we've uh, we've gotten close to that a couple times. So make sure you save your spot. Look forward to seeing you there. Can't wait to show you the strategy. It's going to be unbelievable. Talk to you then.